so um, you're currently working on a, another gig. We were talking about last time when you were up, we were talking about possibly putting on sort of like a 90s special evening. Yeah. Now that's kind of not materialised at the moment, but you are working on something else, aren't you? Yeah, I, I chop and change. Um, I don't know if it's probably with the weather, to be honest <laughs> with you. I just I just get this thought. I When I'm at work working away and on my day job, I, you know, I'm thinking away, of, you know, what, what could we do that'd be quite good next? Um, so we had the destination night that was uh, last week. Um, so that was out of the way. And for the next one, um, this is a weird one, really. I was thinking, you know, what, what could we do next that's totally different? Um, but, yeah, I had a good, long, hard think after last week's gig. Um, you know, if there's any downfalls, what we could have done better, blah, blah, blah. And um, I just had a thought, you know, we used to have some real good times in nightlife in Ramsey. And um, I thought, well, let's have a night where we get the guys from Nightlife down. Um, you know, we ask all the old DJs if they want to play. Um, now, there's one guy who I'd, I'd love to have got, but um, he he's turned me down on many occasions, Paul Hughes, good old Paul Hughes. Mm. So um, we, I don't think we'll ever get him, but I'd, I'd love to have him if he would ever say yes, you know, if he's listening, Paul, please. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's uh, he's proper retired from the, from the DJ scene and he's sticking to it. Uh, but we've got uh, Hoff and Pippi and um, Derek Liney Jr. So they're going to join us for a nightlife takeover in the courthouse. And that's happening on the payday Saturday of this month, which is, let me, I've just wrote it down. Where have I put it? Uh, is it the 26th? I think it's Saturday the 26th. Yes, because I think payday is a Friday, isn't it, this yeah. month? Because we're in June now. Yes. We are in June, yeah. It's, I, do you know what? Some days I don't, sometimes I don't even know what day it is. But we yeah. don't know what year it is. Yeah, yeah. Old age. Yeah, old age and COVID. Yes. Both of those. So you've got your nightlife special coming to Douglas, and this is in the hope of, you know, um, I suppose pulling in all those people that go out in Ramsey to get down here into Douglas. Yeah, well, without... Like I'm from Douglas now. You know, people will probably say, "No, you're totally wrong." But I think Ramsey's a, is a different place without nightlife. You know, I've I've been up there for a, for a few nights out, and it just doesn't seem the same to, you know, end up, you know, if you're not ending up in nightlife. It's a bit weird. Now you've got Cool Bar up there, which is you know, it's really good in there. Um, but nightlife was, um, you know, people were there, and it was open really late, and you know, it was just an unbelievable crowd that was. It seemed way ahead of Douglas at the time. Mm. So, yeah, I think I have a totally different experience with nightlife because um, just before nightlife closed, because yeah. we said it closed about five years ago, didn't it? You yeah, said, we'll, get, we'll get on to this in um, a sec, yeah. That um, I was in the police and based in uniform in Ramsey. So I have a totally different <laughs> view of nightlife to probably anyone else up there that used to have a brilliant night in there. Yeah. But yes, I am sure from a police point of view, Ramsey's a lot quieter now. It probably is, yeah. We So m myself, when I played up there as a guest and uh, obviously uh, Derek Liney Jr. and Hoff and Pippi and all the other guys that, uh, you know, guested in nightlife. They used to whip people up into a frenzy and that often, you know, ended up outside as well, as I'm sure you're aware. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, we, we're going to try and recreate that. We're going to invite anyone that was uh, a big fan of nightlife into Douglas on the t Saturday the 26th. We've got, you know, obviously the old nightlife residents. And uh, I was doing a little bit of research and for whatever weird reason, it sort of ties into the night we have the event is pretty much to the one day out from five years on from when it shut. Right. Yeah. So I only found that out tonight. So it, so, is a, it really is a reunion. Yeah. So it closed on the 25th of June, 2016. So, you know, it's it's a bit odd. Yeah. But but good. I hope that it's going to be like birthday cake, oh. free drinks. Uh, no, well, we, no, we can't go that far. My, my pockets aren't that deep. <laughs> But um, yeah, so we're inviting, you know, if there's any old bar staff, any old uh, ravers that want to, you know, get themselves out of the uh, the metaphorical retirement home, you know, come down and uh, join all the, the original crew and, uh, you know, like minded ravers and it'll uh, it'll be a great, great night. So we're, uh, we're going to do it as a charity night as well, which is um, we're going to charge three pound on the door and all the uh, door profit is going to go to Craig's Heartstrong Foundation. So that's uh that's going to be a very, very beneficial charity. So I've been spoke, uh, speaking to Paul Healy from uh, the charity uh, today. So getting some facts and figures from him, you know, seeing what the charity's up to. So uh, um, do you want me to tell you a bit about that? Yes, got, yeah, go ahead. Cause I th yes, because I think charities need all the help they can get at the moment, especially oh, coming yeah. out of COVID oh, and yeah. people not having as much money to give. Yeah, so... Um, Craig's Heartstrong Foundation, if you're not aware, there's, there's 
might be one or two out there, but it's a very well-known charity set up in 2005 here on the island. And it was set up in the name of Craig Lunt. And um, he sadly passed away in April of that year with a previously undiagnosed condition. Uh, it was called QT syndrome. So, you know, it's, it causes, uh, you know, sudden death. Unfortunately, it sounds uh, sounds horrendous. But um, there's, a, there's a wide range of disorders out there that does cause sudden death in young people. So um, what Craig's Heartstrong Foundation do, they um, team up with... Um, cardiac arrest in the young at the charity cry um or the team at cry and um they do screenings to screen people for these defects so um there'll be people out there think they're absolutely fine fit and healthy but these screenings do show things up which you know one day can and will save their lives so um the screenings from uh, craig's heartstrong foundation you know they've, they've done really well over the years um, they've missed out obviously through COVID, so um, they're going to try and you know get them back up and running when they can. Um, Paul said to me today, he said, you know, the, the fingers crossed they're going to try and get one in before the year's out. So and then hopefully next year back to the uh, the two screenings a year that they used to do. So uh, we'll uh, try and keep people up to date with that. So uh, check out their uh, their website and uh, there'll be more information for that. But yeah, that's the uh, the charity we are. Uh, we're going to be raising the money for and they're doing defibs as well you've probably seen um, all the little green boxes around a lot of them have been you know donated from the charity um you know there's i think the paul said they've got uh, four defibs going in in the next couple of weeks and um, i do have some facts and figures somewhere and actually defibrillators are really important aren't they at that at that time when someone actually you know heart stops beating they're really That's important it, yeah. to get that on and working yeah so i think to date they've done um 400 is uh, how many they've got out there uh they've got 55 public boxes um so yeah as i mentioned another five going out in the next three to four weeks and uh, you know that's going to be something they continue to do you know identify places where the defibs are going to be needed and you know in the future you know they can be installed there too so yeah very very worthwhile thing well, it's a fantastic charity, so it's going to be three quid on the door. How many people can you have? Uh, our, ca- our capacity is, is 250. Right, um, okay. Obviously, you'll yep. get people coming and going during yep. the night, yep. so, we'll, so we can get more a... than that. And uh, mm-hmm. hopefully we'll put some collections out as well, so if anyone's got any spare change you know, from the bar or whatever, they can, uh, they can chuck that in there as well. Great, fantastic. And these screenings that you were talking about, yeah. um, do you know when the next one is, or is all that no, information it's... going to be on the website? It's all down to the border restrictions, really, right. and when they can, because the guys from they have to get uh, people over, yeah. Mm. So the, the team from Cry have to come over, and they do the screening. So it's uh, you know fingers crossed when they can come over, they'll uh, they'll they'll book something. But normally there's about six weeks notice for booking, and you can do that through the uh, the website. You know, so if you're um, age is it 14 to 45 and uh, you think your child or yourself or uh, you know any of your loved ones want to be screened then you can uh, book through that website so uh, there will be plenty of notice normally about six weeks before the the booking opens when the uh, the event will be announced and i sometimes think with these things you're better off knowing aren't you so even if you do think you're fit and healthy nothing wrong with you you know oh yeah you know you're gonna live forever you know it's worth getting these tests just to find out because if you have got something it can save your life yeah and plenty of people you know have gone through these screenings and they have identified issues and you know some of them have been sorted or managed you know it's it's definitely a worthwhile thing i've been through it my um my eldest son you know i made sure he went through it it's um you know it's something it's a no-brainer absolute no-brainer